Sandra, the manager of a Chiquich fast food restaurant, is facing a shortage of supplies. Meanwhile, Becky drives to work. At a phone booth, a man angrily shouts at the person on the other end of the line. Becky and Kevin arrive at the fast food restaurant. Sandra reminds her staff to give their best, since a franchise quality control will visit as a secret customer. She then expresses concern about someone leaving the freezer door open last night, spoiling their food stocks. Sander emphasizes the importance of following procedures diligently, not just about getting the order right, but also ensuring that tasks are performed in the correct sequence. As the day kicks off, Sandra's team begins to work. Meanwhile at the counter, Becky engages in a conversation with Marty, the shift supervisor. Becky confides her concern about Sandra suspecting her of leaving the freezer door open. Seeking to reassure Becky, Marty tells her that Sandra actually believes Kevin is the one responsible. Their discussion shifts to the guy Becky has been seeing. Sandra abruptly joins the conversation, informing them that her boyfriend might propose soon since he has already spoken to her father. Marty and Becky congratulate her. The discussion shifts back to the guy who keeps sending Becky suggestive photos. Marty remarks that they are both too old for that, but Sandra disagrees, saying her boyfriend knows how to keep things exciting. As Sandra leaves, she notices Becky and Marty laughing quietly behind her back. Unaware of the reason, Sandra continues with her managerial duties. She checks on Harold the custodian and finds him done with his tasks, with plans to return later for a milkshake. During her shift, Sandra's boyfriend Van calls asking for her approval to hang out with friends. Sandra clarifies that Van doesn't need her permission and advises him to avoid getting too drunk before returning to her busy work and ending the call. Meanwhile, Becky, Kevin, and Connie are discussing changing their working schedule at the counter. Suddenly, Sandra interrupts them and tells them to get back to work. Soon after, Marty informs Sandra of a call from a police officer waiting here in the restaurant office. Officer Daniels introduces himself on the call, explaining he's in touch with their regional manager, Robert Gilmore. When Sandra inquires about a potential freeze issue, Daniels refutes it, stating the call involves a theft case. Daniels shares details of an employee who allegedly stole from a customer's purse, matching Becky's description. He adds that Becky is part of a larger investigation. Sandra subsequently leads Becky to the office, replacing her at the counter with Marty, and lets her speak to Daniels. Despite the accusations, Becky staunchly denies any wrongdoing. Following Daniels' instructions, Sandra checks Becky's pockets and confiscates her phone, finding nothing incriminating. After checking Becky's purse, with the warning of dismissal if any stolen items are found, Sandra reports back to Daniels, confirming no evidence of theft. Later, Daniels informs Sandra that Becky must be placed in a holding cell overnight. He then explains that for the sake of controlling the situation, Sandra needs to conduct a strip search on Becky. When Sandra shows discomfort at this, Daniels outlines that without compliance, a drawn-out trial could ensue, which may result in Becky's imprisonment. Daniels presents Becky with a difficult decision be taken into custody or submit to a strip search. Continuing to assert her innocence, Becky is reluctant to accept either option. Sandra, however, lays out the implications of refusal, making clear the potential consequences. After some contemplation, Becky agrees to the strip search with one condition she wants Marty present during the procedure within the confines of the restaurant office. Daniels agrees with the condition. Sandra fetches Marty. Meanwhile, a conversation unfolds between Daniels and Becky, touching upon her older brother's problematic encounters with the law. Daniels comments that Becky truly doesn't know her brother, who is currently entangled with the law. Sandra and Marty enter. Sandra explains the situation to Marty, and the strip search commences. Becky disrobes completely, allowing Sandra to conduct the search. However, she finds nothing, a fact she promptly reports to Daniels. Undeterred, Daniels instructs Sandra to inspect Becky's underwear, although Sandra asks Becky to remove her underwear, to which Becky ultimately complies. Sandra later confirms that she found nothing concealed there. Daniels then instructs Sandra to have Becky turn around for a final check, after which Sandra is to bag Becky's clothes and transport them to her car, as they might contain secret pockets that Sandra isn't trained to identify. Daniels explains that they will examine Becky's clothes upon arrival, raising Marty's suspicion. Why place the clothes in Sandra's car when they could wait for the police to arrive and conduct the search in the restaurant office? 
Sander echoes Marty's query, but Daniels counters that leaving the clothes with Becky could enable her to hide the stolen money and escape repercussions. Sander expresses skepticism, prompting Daniels to reveal confidential information the police are currently searching Becky's home due to suspicions of her older brother's involvement in drug dealing and the possibility of Becky's own complicity. Daniels elaborates that the investigation is broader in scope, and they hope to locate the stolen money which would facilitate obtaining a confession from Becky about the drug case. Sandra obliges, placing Becky's clothes in her car and then returning to the restaurant office. Marty departs to assist Connie at the counter, while Sandra communicates to Daniels that she needs to resume her managerial duties during the busy period. Daniels acknowledges that the search at Becky's home is ongoing and advises Sandra to appoint a reliable employee to supervise Becky. In response, Sandra brings Kevin into the restaurant office and briefs him on suspicion of Becky's theft and her brother's involvement. Kevin staunchly defends Becky and her brother, whom he knows personally. Soon, Sandra lets Kevin watch Becky until the police can get to the restaurant. Later, Daniels instructs Kevin to inspect Becky's entire body, which prompts resistance from both Kevin and Becky, the latter insisting that Sandra has already done so. Kevin, reluctant to participate further, excuses himself momentarily. However, Sander intercepts him. Kevin expresses his discomfort with the situation, given his friendship with Becky, leaving Sander with no option but to return to the restaurant office. She asks Daniels what happened, and Daniels tells her that Kevin isn't professional. Daniels scolds Sandra for sharing confidential information with Kevin about Becky's brother. He then presents Sandra with a choice either personally oversee Becky or find someone reliable to do so. He suggests involving Sandra's boyfriend, Van. Although hesitant at first, she summons him to the restaurant. Upon his arrival, Sandra briefs Van and entrusts him with Becky's supervision. As Van oversees Becky, Daniels instructs him to compel Becky to disrobe and submit to a body check. Van objects, but Daniels manipulates Becky into consenting to the search. He then instructs her to perform jumping jacks while uncloth in front of Van, telling him that Becky may be hiding contraband inside her body. Soon, Sandra arrives, and Becky pleads with her but gets dismissed. When Sandra leaves, Daniels demands Van spank Becky as a punishment for her disobedience. He emphasizes that Van shouldn't just pat her, he should inflict pain to send a message that her behavior will not be tolerated. Daniels tells Van not to stop until Becky learns her lesson. He also asks Van to lay the phone close so he can hear the spanking. Van obliges, ordering Becky to lie on his lap. He then spanks her loudly for a long time. Meanwhile, Marty asks Sandra what Van is doing back in the office. Sandra defensively tells her that Van is guarding her until the police arrive. Marty volunteers to watch Becky when the number of customers slows down. Afterward, Daniels forces Becky again, this time to perform a Joe Blow on Van. Becky obliges, feeling guilty about what he had done. Van becomes dazed, leaving Sandra confused as she had just brought them something to eat. Sandra inquires why Van isn't on the phone with Daniels, so she takes the phone. Daniels tells Sandra that her boyfriend is exhausted, telling her to send him home. Van leaves abruptly, further confusing Sandra. However, Daniels tells Sandra that she needs to find another man to take Van's place in watching over Becky. Sandra assigns Harold, who just came back for a milkshake at the restaurant. She takes him to the restaurant office and explains everything. Sandra tells Daniels that Harold is there to watch over Becky while she goes back to the counter to try and call Van. Eventually, Sandra gives the phone to Harold. He talks to Daniels, who asks if Becky still has the apron. Naturally disagreeable, Harold begins questioning Daniels' real motive. Daniels orders him to take Becky's apron off so he can find the money that she stole. Harold confronts Daniels, but he tells her it's an investigation. Harold goes out and tells Sandra about it. Eventually, Sandra calls Robbie, the regional manager, and tells him about the situation with the officer talking to him all day. However, Robbie tells her that he has been sick all day and hasn't talked to anybody. Shocked, Sandra realizes she has been scammed. Sandra talks to Daniels and asks who he is, but Daniels orders food from their menu and jokes around. Daniels hangs up. Before long, the police are called and a seasoned detective assumes command of the case. They promptly escort Becky from the premises, and the detective begins contacting individuals who could potentially help with the investigation. He discovers a series of strikingly similar cases, all linked to the same individual who leads a dual life as a telemarketer and a family manual. In a swift turn of events, Daniels finds himself under arrest while working in his office. 
Becky, having endured the harrowing ordeal, contemplates filing a legal suit against Sandra. However, her attorney advises a strategic move she should file a case against Chickwitch. In the meantime, Sandra, who finds herself unemployed after the incident, ends her relationship with Van. A journalist interviews her about the incident, but the presence of her attorney restricts Sandra's ability to address all the questions. Interestingly, this incident is quite common. Over the span of the last year, more than 70 similar occurrences have been documented across nearly 30 states in the US. I can't believe that this is an actual real story. This movie is based on a phone call scam that took place in Mount Washington, Kentucky. In 2004 at a McDonald's, Daniels was a prison guard in Florida who was first charged but then acquitted. The restaurant manger received probation, and her fiancé, who helped guard the employee, pleaded guilty to exual abuse and exual misconduct. He got a five-year jail sentence. A jury rewarded the victim $5 million from McDonald's, but the company appealed and she eventually settled for an undisclosed amount. How awful that the prison guard got away with this. What do you guys think? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.